to the rationalmister.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Rational Investors Daily Brief uh, Recap. Uh, this will just be a quick uh, summary of what we're seeing in the market here today. It's quite remarkable to watch uh, the crude oil markets uh, melting down here. Uh, it does look like stock markets catching a bit of a bid, so maybe we're at the point where the breadth indicator can finally start turning around. I think we've talked to you lots about how the country funds are completely wiped out here. And actually, you can even see that the uh, the S&P 500 now in the short term uh, got oversold. We're not quite oversold on the medium term yet, though. So what this probably means is we probably have like a little short term reprieve and then one more dump against the lows to cause the medium term to go oversold. And then we know. We're at some sort of a cyclical bottom. So uh, lots of up and down, uh, but uh, the uh, down uh, sure seems to be dominating in crude oil land for um, specifically. Usually, um, and man, I've been having the weirdest sleeps of late. Now my eyesight seems to be going a bit on me. So I'm a little concerned about that. Not having the best day. I uh, did take a shot on the crude against the level that I had and got stepped out for $125 loss. Yeah, that's where it goes. Uh, I was maybe a little bit hasty in pulling the trigger on that. So I did make a, a, a demon journal entry about how I need to see confirmed bullish divergences if I'm thinking about buying. Um so uh, I don't know whether we're going to do an after party here today or not. Usually Wednesdays we work on uh, special projects, but uh, maybe special projects will be on hold today and we'll just do an after party show with the TRI people. I don't know. Um, so I guess uh, sort of demonstrator of best practices. You know, I think it's a good idea to work on journaling. Of course, you can see every single day. I am journaling like a madman, what I'm seeing in the market and levels. Uh, took my shot, got stopped. And uh, I'm obsessive about risk management. So I uh, took my shot, got stopped. Close it up for the day. <clears throat> Come back and play a game again tomorrow. Um, I guess uh, the broader uh, market uh, we started out the day uh, sort of like what's sort of the tone out of Europe. Uh, the Japanese got um, absolutely hoodwinked uh, overnight down about two, two and a half percent. Of course, the, uh, the nonsense over there in Asia is continuing on. But it uh, looks to me like this is actually more specifically about Japan than anything else. Uh, European stocks bounce back a little bit. Now we are seeing that a bit in the U.S. market as well. Um, you know, uh, producer prices fall most on record. Oh, that's always a good sign. <laughs> uh, Italian private sector contracts, uh, excuse me, contracts uh, for fourth month. So, you know, the uh, situation in Europe probably isn't getting any better anytime soon. Um. Japanese uh, yen, we talked, to, I don't know whether we talked about that in the uh, free show yesterday or not. I know I talked quite a bit about it in the after party and stuff. Uh, that did uh, catch me by surprise. And uh, one of our uh, secret options formula uh, OGs, uh, we had a fun meeting. It's just the three of us, Francis uh, Cole, uh, who is interesting because we have a eclipse coming up here uh shortly and so maybe in the after party we'll just review sort of our conversation around that cole's uh, super into all this celestial stuff uh and this uh eclipse coming up here in october should be a wild ride and there's a whole bunch of weird sort of things that are happening to us humans you know like the uh u.s congress now uh technically is a lame duck uh they're gonna have to elect a new leader 
Uh, and of course, uh, everybody's worried about, uh, well, what are we going to do about the Ukrainians and all the money that we're just magically printing out of thin air and throwing at them? <laughs> Maybe we'll stop doing that. And the inflation problem will actually come back into check. But keep in mind, the banksters, this is their plan from day one. So maybe this is along with the sickness, right? There's another reason to print a whole bunch of money that we don't have. And of course, hyperinflate the economy to do the Great Reset. So was this uh, Ukrainian, Russian war, all that, was that part of the banksters' plan to justifiably hyperinflate the economy i'm thinking yes to be honest with you but anyway it's crazy humans in this world that we live in um interesting how the new zealanders uh were holding interest rates at um at bay but you know seeing what's going on over there in asia i mean the japanese stock market melting down here I'm a little surprised that they're still talking hawkish, but keep in mind, central bankers are always late. They're always wrong. They always do too much and they always act very bureaucratic. So I guess that shouldn't surprise us too much. Uh, so anyway, that was our uh, sort of backdrop to start the day. The bond market, of course, quite unhappy. Uh, and that's sort of what started off all this uh, sort of, oh, is the market going to go into recession and all that kind of talk? Uh, out of the gate. Um, I think actually the econs today came out relatively tame, so I think the bonds are a little bit happier. Anyway, there's your sort of uh, backdrop. Uh, what actually happened today, uh, econ-wise? Um, you can see this was sort of our what to expect for today, Wednesday. Uh, we had uh, ADP uh, employment numbers. That's sort of like the private payrolls. Uh, keep an eye on that. Mortgage rates, uh, you can see I started this uh, update process. I was up really, really early this morning. Like I said, haven't been sleeping well at all lately, which is a bit of a shame. Now, like I said, my eyesight's kind of acting screwy today now. So always good signs. Um, anyway, uh, so we had uh, private employment numbers that were uh, going to be uh, uh, come out. I think they came out relatively okay. Uh, global Composite PMI, Purchasing Managers Indexes. Um, I don't know, we used to, um, we used to call it the Institute for Supply Management. I don't know whether they, I guess that's what ISM stands for. So I guess they still have that. Um, then we had uh, some minor data points. I mean, uh, the ISM services, PMI, obviously that's a pretty important one. Services though, not manufacturing. And uh, is the US economy moving towards more of a service-based uh, economy? I think so. Uh, and when they, even when they sort of relocated all the manufacturing out of China there over the past year or two, a lot of it just went straight to Mexico, not really even coming back to the US. So. Um, a bunch of Fed speakers here uh, today, uh, Schmidt and uh, Bowman. I suppose they probably rattled the market a little bit with their rhetoric. And then we had uh, in oil inventories to look out for. So anyway, that was our backdrop to start the day. Um, and I suppose where is our uh, news and econs? How did we do with the data? So data came out. Now they're saying U.S. private employment rises less than expected. That's that ADP number I was talking about there a second ago. Uh, so if we uh, pop on over and let's see what the actual uh, econs came out as. Uh, we've got uh, ADP here. Where the hell is ADP? Uh, right there came in 89,000. Market was looking for 160,000. So Employment picture uh, quite a bit um, weaker, I suppose, than expected. Uh, interesting how you had that jolts uh, number was relatively firm yesterday, uh, implying that, and I guess the way that I would interpret this is that uh, there's still a lot of companies that would absolutely love to hire people, but they're just not paying people enough money. So people are like, well, yeah, it's great that you have help wanted signs, but the wages that you're willing to pay us are laughable considering the hyperinflation. 
And if I understand correctly, the United Auto or um, the Auto Workers, the United Auto Workers, I don't know, remember what, UAW, I think they wanted something like a 40% increase in wages to go back to work. 40%. So it just goes to show, you know, now we're in the, it starts off cost uh, push. So all the costs uh, of this uh, inflation cycle, you see the M2 money supply number I show you guys consistently. And we talked about that last night. It's not really the actual number. I mean, the number is embarrassing and they're hyperinflating us into fucking Weimar Germany land, which is scary. Uh, thanks, Klaus, and your great reset bullshit. Um, but it's more like the rate of change of the inflation picture. So we were sort of humming along at a relatively um, you know, consistent rate of increase in the money supply. And really, we shouldn't be doing that at all. The money supply should stay flat. But that's the banker's tax, right? And this is this whole bullshit inflation world we live in. Um, and then, of course, through the sickness, it just went absolutely insane. And, of course, you guys have heard me rant about this endlessly, so you should all be able to finish my sentences for me. Uh, but uh, let's see. I think I actually, we were even talking about this last night in the... Uh, in the meeting last night, and let's see where we are here. Did I have it? I might not have produced it. Uh, um, well, those are the old ones, actually. I hope David O's are doing okay. I haven't heard from him in a bit. I tell you, we're in a funny transition period here. A lot of things are changing. Uh, sadly, some people uh, have lost loved ones. Um, I can feel myself. I'm changing. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. No, nope, I don't have that number on me. Thought I had it uh, in the room, but I guess I didn't post it. Anyway, uh, back to the story. Um, so the econs themselves came in uh, relatively okay. I mean, you can see uh, global composite PMI eh, in line with expectations. Not really a huge shock there. Um, <clears throat> slightly above 50, which theoretically means expansion. Global uh, services PMI, this is the one that I think that they, well, they have this ISM services PMI here, 53.6, it's above 50, so that means expansion and basically in line with expectations. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's like, uh, oh my God, runaway inflation. And I think because of that number, uh, you actually saw that the um, the bonds actually sort of calmed down and they started to move back up. So as a result, with the bond market rallying, don't have to worry about hyperinflation. Uh, the stock market's caught a bid and they seem to be relatively happy here today. With uh, the NASDAQ, high beta names, all that kind of stuff uh, leading the charge, which is probably going to be Sort of the um, the theme, I suppose, of probably the next five, 10 years is anytime you do see the stock market rally, it will be led by uh, NASDAQ and all those. Uh, you know, in the 1950s, they called them the nifty 50s, uh, where there was, you know, eh, probably about 20 or 30 stocks that made up like basically the bulk of the uh, stock market gains uh, through that period and everything else kind of just went sideways. And I get the impression you're gonna see that same sort of scenario here as well. Um, and of course you see the crude oil, crude oil uh, just puking right out here. And it's just so absolutely insanely volatile, volatile right now. Uh, then it's not even really like tradable. It's just sort of like, it goes, uh, you know, I don't know whether uh, this is a, a three minute chart, but I mean, look at this, this is just straight direction. Like I said, I did have a level to justify taking a shot here. Uh, I took my shot, I quickly got stopped out and I just left the thing alone. And, you know, if anything, this is a really good example of why you have to uh, use uh, strict stop management uh, and risk management principles. 
Because if I had just bought this and said, ah, oh, screw it, you know, I'll just let it ride, uh, I could be in a world of trouble now. So anyway, took my shot, got stopped, next bus in 10 minutes. Um, interesting, too, to see the percentage moves of these markets through this kind of market state. Because, uh, I mean, as I said there a moment ago, and, and this has been a bit crazy, it's like straight up and now straight down. There isn't a hell of a lot of back and forth. Like I was expecting there to be some back and forth here. Um, you know, we had, uh, this is the, uh, I think this is the 30 SMA off of this daily chart that I took my shot off. I had a whole bunch of levels to justify taking the shot and the market just blew right through that. So no back and forth at all, but I suppose this kind of action is probably going to uh, help the uh, tech stocks uh, immensely. Um, and interestingly enough, I suppose you could make the argument that we had uh, plenty of sort of uh, warnings that uh, the energy market was going to come off. Uh, you've heard me barking about things like Halliburton, how he just keeps puking out. And then, um, you know, the ConocoPhillips, um, which is sort of like the most popular a uh, big blue chip uh, oil stock that's owned by like Peter Fink and all those people just absolutely puking out. So, I mean, I suppose there were warnings that the oil market was going to come off. It's just, you know, it's, um, you know, sometimes uh, you get the little bit of back and forth and other times it's just straight one direction. I will say it's a bit odd to see a big commodity like crude oil move like 4% in the day. You know, like I said there earlier, you, I mean, usually, <laughs> usually asterisks, um, markets usually like to pivot. You get about two, two and a half percent move in a commodity or a major index or something like that. And then you get a bit of back and forth. But today, nope, it's just a straight meltdown. And if I understand correctly, I think uh, the culprit, you know, speaking about um, uh, econs, um, the culprit is really uh, the EIA data, not so much crude oil. I mean, frankly speaking, I would have thought that on balance, that would have been a relatively positive uh, development, a drawdown in the crude stocks. And uh, you can see previous was down 2 million. They were actually looking for uh, a, a drawdown, but not really that big, a half a million. And it came in down 2.2 million. So I would have thought that would have been somewhat bullish. Again, you know, like I said, I took my shot and got blown out. So uh, the fundamentals didn't help that trade at all. And the technical sure didn't help that trade. It's just, man, that, that damn oil is up and down like a horse drawers right now. Uh, I think really the the sort of story that that's driving the market is this uh, gasoline industry. Um, and this also is probably a commentary on the consumer and how they're probably, you know, and also too, this is not really the summer driving season anymore. So, you know, consumers are probably um, driving less. And so as a result, you see the inventory of gasolines uh, moved up dramatically. You know, that was a pretty big uh, jump there. So if we look at that, this, if you see this making higher highs and higher lows, this is actually fundamentally bearish uh, of price. You know, there's more uh, supply, less demand. Uh, so inventories go up. So if I understand correctly, I think the gasoline, um, uh, the gasoline uh, futures are just getting absolutely smoked here today. Uh, gasoline. Uh, United States gas fund. Let's see what we got here. Wow. Now there's a chart, eh? Boom. So uh, I, I was kind of joking with uh, Chris. Uh, I don't know whether I really believe in the commodity super cycle. I mean, ironically enough, my uh, theory, my sort of um, thesis is that uh, we're actually in a commodities bear market now. We will be for the next 10, 15 years. So I wonder whether that's some big ass cycle top that's coming in there on crude. But the irony of all of this is that, you know, and this is where this makes this so difficult, 
is if you try and figure out what the hell the bankster crooks are doing to us, uh, we actually see that on balance, uh, even though this theoretically should be the top of the commodity cycle, even this uh, gasoline fund, I mean, that doesn't look very bullish. Uh, so that's that's uh, taking into account all the dilution um, of uh, the money printing. So, you know, if we go RB for uh, reblended uh, gasoline, RBOB, uh, there is the gas futures. This will probably give you a little bit more data to work with. Um, all right, so and this doesn't give us much. It only goes back to 1993. You would think, okay, well, that's a relatively bull market. And if that's the case, then this is the top of the commodity cycle which should have been, in fact, I think that you can even see 2017, 2018. This is when the commodity cycle was supposed to break. Uh, and everything just went absolutely haywire with this stupid sickness crookery. Uh, and, you know, if we actually look at what happened through that money printing bonanza, we see that that's what the unleaded gasoline looks like. If you take out all of the you know, basically criminal behavior. You know, I did see someone, uh, and I've seen actually a few people say this, you know, if you and I had a printing press and we turned it on in the backyard and or the garage or whatever, and we just started printing money, we would be thrown in jail. But for some reason, these banksters are allowed to do this at their leisure, at their whim, whenever they want. So it just goes to show how corrupt this whole society is. It's, it's, it's criminal what's going on, but there doesn't seem to be anything we can do about it, which is kind of a shame. Anyway, so uh, there was your George Bush uh, Jr. sort of peak in this oil market. And since then, it's just been an absolute train wreck because they just keep printing more and more and more money. So it makes our uh, life trying to figure out this uh, whole thing a bit difficult. Um you know, if you don't listen to the hyperinflation and the dilution, then you'd say, well, that looks like a bull market. And then what's scary is that this now looks like a, a bear flag. So uh, there's your flagpole waving in the breeze. And uh, this is your flag from there to there. Uh, and, uh, you know, if this thing plays out the way it does, and it sure looks like the momentum is breaking here, then we're probably coming right back down to these lows, which is what should happen, uh, through this cycle is, is energy prices should collapse. I suppose the $64,000 question is, do they collapse because of the unwinding of the global, uh, growth cycle? I mean, I think China's in big, big trouble. Um, or uh, do they collapse because, uh, you know, the, uh, the ESG and all that uh, stuff, um, uh, they try and move our society away from using uh, gasoline. I have no idea what the uh, future is going to hold. All I will say is that that looks like a very bearish uh, price pattern. And if we look at momentum, you can see beautiful uh, double top breakdowns here uh, in the MACD histogram. So certainly no reason to be bullish there. Well, interesting how Willie never did get stupidly overbought through all this, but you can definitely see the M's coming in here. So uh, a being long oil and oil industry uh, and even things like refining unleaded gasoline, I think that's going to be a tough sell here for, for a while. So we'll see how that all plays out. And then, of course, you know, if we have to have another sickness because that's what Klaus's plan is, great reset, all that nonsense, uh, shutting everything down. Well, you saw what happened the last time when they did that. They literally took uh, the crude oil to like negative prices, uh, which, of course, is just more sort of craziness in our society. So put it all together, uh, it's going to be a bit of a slog for energy bulls. Uh, the energy stocks look bad. The commodities look bad. Um, and interestingly enough, this should, all of this kind of action should actually help things like the NASDAQ uh, and the tech sector. It'll be interesting to see whether this actually does M out. You know, there are some people that uh, say that really this isn't a signal 
until we actually get a close below that level. So it's interesting how they've stabbed down into here, they've stabbed down into here, and it just keeps snapping back. You know, you might find that actually this thing doesn't break down. I don't know, tough to say. I would say just in the short term, given, of course, it is uh, September, actually not anymore, it's October, isn't it? Um, we're in, you know, a very kind of dangerous part of the year. So, uh, you know, um, uh, the U.S. government right now has uh, kind of been thrown into a tizzy. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to find here. There we go. Uh, so, I mean, there is technically a big smile working here. I did hear some people talking about how uh, there is a, a next uh, wave of the financial problems uh, developing, things like bank runs and stuff like that. But I don't know whether it's going to have too much to do with uh, the NASDAQ here. Yeah. I guess uh, for us to get like actually uber bullish of NASDAQ, we probably want to see a W on the other side of this trend line. And probably the easiest thing you can probably take away from this is there's the top end of the trading range. There's the bottom end of the trading range. These tails in here. And for the time being, we're probably just going to bang around sideways for a bit. So... Uh, if we do actually go and close below these levels, then I think, okay, uh, we've got probably some uh, serious price uh, uh, depreciation coming. The fact that they keep punching this thing lower and it just won't break lower. Uh, now, I think, like I said, I think we're still just stuck in this trading range. We'll see how that plays out. If we look at the individual names, um, you know, uh, we've talked lots about China. We've got, uh, uh, actually, where is, that's not the chart I wanted to show. I have it over here. No. No. Uh, okay, well, here, let's just go. I think this is it. Quick boo right across the board. I did notice that Alan was uh, perking up quite a bit there. Um where is Alan? There he is. So that trade's basically back to scratch. It's kind of just going sideways right at that weekly key reversal breakdown level. Um, looks like uh, Meta and Zuckerberg and all that kind of stuff. They're trying to put in some sort of bullish reversal. It's fascinating how this whole battle is right off a, a bullish bot level. So, you know, I mean, if you're a trader, you just got to trade the levels. And if this W works and bot works, then we're probably going to rally all the way up top here. Um, you know, just live by the sword. Uh, Apple, you can see how he's put in a little bit of a bullish fractal there and it's trying to work its way back up in the face of a big uh, bearish breakdown. Um, so we'll see how that goes. You might get a nice little W that comes in off of that apple, which is a sort of an, a reprieve of the selling. And uh, you can see how the uh, W is trying to come in here on the apple. And you can see the NASDAQ right here. He's trying to put in a W. So my hunch is if Apple does try and break out here and, you know, you can see the oil market is in absolute free fall here. So of course the tech stocks absolutely love that. The gold market is in absolute free fall. So, you know, it doesn't look like there's a problem with inflation here now, which is kind of ironic. Um, and um, I guess that Amazon uh, did trade to new highs, then trade took out these lows. So you might even call that like a, a, a megaphone expanding wedge there. Uh, NVIDIA, actually NVIDIA should be interesting to see because they always say that the semiconductors are the best leading indicator. So uh, does this uh, NVIDIA actually spit out some sort of uh, head and shoulders top? You can see that it's having a bit of an up day, but really not enough to get us like too excited. I would have expected this thing to rally up like if it is a head and shoulders to rally up against this high. But maybe this was sort of like a harbinger, this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight day rally here that the market, you know, would just, it wasn't ready to collapse and actually it needed to bounce a little bit. So really how NVIDIA acts here going forward should probably be a, a really good tell for which way this market breaks. Um, I think everything else, you know, they always say semiconductors are the ultimate leading indicator. 
So keep an eye on that. And NVIDIA, of course, is the leader in that space. Um, sort of like uh, next in line, things like AMD. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really seeing a hell of a lot. We probably, if this is a head and shoulders, we should actually come down into this level here. Uh, but uh, you can see it tried to pivot back up. Why off of this level? I don't know. That's a good question. V bottom, filling in gaps. So it's not really like this is uberly bullish. And I would probably say, same thing as I say with all of this stuff, probably not a buy until we actually get a W on the other side of the trend line. So we broke out through the uh, trend line, but this is just basically a V bottom. So what you would like to see is if this is a bull is, you know, give us some sort of big fat W here. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. As I stand right now, I don't think there's really a heck of a lot to get excited either one way or the other way right now. Could very easily come down and test the low, fill in the gaps. Could very easily rally back up and fill in this gap. That's still a bit open there. This gap right here is open. So this thing could go either direction here in the short term. And I get the impression from the whole market that that's sort of how, you know, if we just look at everything, it's sort of like, well, you know, we're not really Wing yet. Uh, we're doing a bit of backfilling after, you know, a pretty nasty week or two that we saw a week or so ago. But the one thing that probably should firm the stock market up and make people feel better is the fact that the commodities markets are absolutely getting smoked here. Uh, and I think I've told you before, right? If uh, a purchasing manager doesn't have to spend so much money on things like unleaded gasoline, like we said, it's just absolutely falling apart. Then they're going to go put their money into things like Microsoft and build um, uh, productivity, um, and uh, which, of course, drives profits. And, of course, that should help also uh, those uh, crypto enthusiasts, right? Because it um, costs money to implement these um these efficiency tools. Uh, and if gasoline prices and commodity prices are coming off, then that means purchasing managers have money in their pockets to go spend on productivity tools. So that's sort of your backdrop of the market right now. Um, I don't know if there's anything really else macro wise you can see. Uh, stocks are enjoying an uppy day. So on balance, I think we're probably going to see more of that. Uh, we had it, you know, it's interesting how, um, as I think I said uh, to you there just a few minutes ago, we had um, one of our OGs who was actually playing the Japanese market short. And into this level uh, last night, actually, he got his double level uh, filled, which means, you know, he, uh, he bought the bear spread up top here. Uh, on this dump, the position doubles in value, so he's supposed to sell two thirds of it, which gives you a nice, uh, you know, 20, 30 percent return on your money. And then you got a free ride. And if this thing really does crap out, then you make a fortune off the free ride. So uh, it is it's an interesting commentary that, you know, if the U.S. market and it looks like the U.S. market, the stocks are catching a bit above a bid. Maybe we see this Japanese market start to come back in earnest. Remember I was saying there a few minutes ago how the NASDAQ is taking back its uh, double top breakdown uh, on the weekly charts. You see the Japanese market is well below. And if we finish the week like this, that is a huge uh, technical failure. Uh, let's see what happens. You know, over the next couple of days, maybe the Japanese market can rally back smartly here. Off the lower time frames, you can see the W trying to form. Is this an inverted head and shoulders? I think we even talked a little bit about that yesterday. I was thinking that the U.S. market kind of wanted to rally. It's just uh, we're just a little bit too early. Um, I think yesterday we were kind of thinking, eh, maybe this is an inverted head and shoulders. Mind you, don't like it when the head and shoulders is so steep, but I would prefer to see it nice and flat. I get the impression looking at this that uh, the head and shoulders is off of that level there. So that means this thing sort of looks like, uh, where are we here? One of these drawing objects. Here we are. Down, up, down, up, down, up, breakout, something like that. Now, is this been busted? 
with the market coming down and breaking these lows, yeah, that's a tough one. You can see they came down one candle and then instantly reversed and got their butt right out of there. Then they came back down into this level and then got their butt out of there again. So I think I remember we were talking about this looking like an inverted head and shoulders tomorrow or yesterday. It's interesting about this too is notice that really that low, if this is an inverted head and shoulders, that low needs to hold. And you see how they did actually hold that low there. So it does look to me like they've turned this market back up. Um, but this is in the context of a sort of a dead cap bounce, right? So we go there to there. We could very easily rally into this trend line. That looks like exactly what they're doing here. So. All right. So uh, I guess, you know, as I said, well, I was quite surprised at the dramatic sell-off in crude, but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, we'll finish off, I suppose, quick boo at uh, Bitcoin. Probably, you know, the fall in energy prices are going to help Bitcoin a little bit. I think I, my comment yesterday was that we can't really get a buy signal here until we get like a W that's on the other side of this downtrend line. So I don't think that this is a buy signal. What I think happens here is we just sort of walk our way along this trend line. And if we cannot um, put in a W, then we'll just keep making lower highs and lower lows and continue along the bear. Right now, if anything, this is almost turning into almost like a doji right now. You can see we stabbed in against that low. And if we look at the daily chart, there it is. So we came back down uh, against that low. If this is a bull, uh, then we should probably do something like boom, 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 and away we go. And that'll create like a nice bullish bot setup uh, to take us probably go and tag that trend line from the other side. We'll see how it goes. Only time will tell. But I suppose if energy prices do come off in earnest and we get a big old fat rally in uh, in tech stocks because of that, eh, it's probably going to drag Bitcoin higher. Um, and then I suppose, you know, just uh, come full circle. Uh, if we're talking uh, the entire broader crypto market, you know, this is drilling down on, on the 30 minute chart. So you can see, you know, this was the uh, hit that bullish bot objective, came back down. You know, if we zoomed out to the daily chart, uh, you can see I got a whole bunch of stuff already on here. Um, let's get rid of that. So the downtrend line just off of here is there to there, right? So, but if we go back to that 30 minute chart, um, Mm, that's a bit different. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Let's crown over there. Crown out there. Come on, you. Oh. That's pretty close. Uh, all right. So let's see what we got here. All right. So broke the trend line, zipped up, hit that bot objective, came screaming back down. And now. This is kind of like the stock market. I mean, they say, I think these, I think crypto to a certain degree is actually trying to transverse into like a growth story uh, versus just a straight commodity story. So you see how similar this looks uh, to things like the stock market when I was uh, showing you that uh, head and shoulders a moment ago. So I think we look something along those lines. So if we can, and notice we, uh, punch down but we did not go through that low so if we can turn our way back up top here well there's quite a bit of run uh move to run back up top there so if you're a lower time frame trader i would uh, definitely pay attention to that i suppose uh looking at the futures markets uh which is where i kind of like to look for levels on bitcoin and if anything, I think it gives a good example of how kind of schizophrenic the uh, crypto market is right now. I get the impression off the futures markets that we're kind of just in that, you can see there is that inverted head and shoulder off the four hour chart. And it's interesting how we basically have a uh, moving average sandwich. So if we do close back above these highs, that will confirm that inverted head and shoulders that will take us back above all these moving averages. You notice there's a huge hole on the charts all the way back up to that 28,000 area. 
There's also a little chart, or excuse me, a little gap off of that key reversal level up uh, at 29,200, 29,300 on these futures contracts. So you can clearly see uh, that inverted head and shoulders is going to be that uh, moving average sandwich resolution. And if they can punch the market back up through the top here, then basically they can run this thing. You can see where my, if I was gonna hunt a trade location uh, to consider taking a shot, you got a nice gap there and you got the ATR level sitting there at 21,200 roughly. I think that's probably not a bad uh, um, um, sort of look uh, for the next little while. Um, you can also see the inverted head and shoulders on the um, 30 minute chart here. And interesting enough, this is an, um, you can kind of see how the, because of this gap, there's almost like one of these fair value gaps kind of thing between this trading range. And there is that sort of inverted head and shoulders neckline level, that horizontal support and resistance. We might pop up and fill in the gap and then get rejected because you can see there is value. So if we can accept back into this level, which means basically accepting back into this big key reversal bar here, then you can see that this whole area of the market will probably rally right back up and tag that POC all the way back up top there. Um, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, again, though, this is the daily chart from the futures. I think what we really need to see for us to get uber bullish is we'd like to see some W's here. You know, put some sort of bullish market structure in here uh, so we can actually go, yep, you know what, we're ready to seriously move higher here. Right now, I would say just in the short term that there's your trading range. Top end of the range of these futures is basically about 28 and a half, 28. Uh, 900, beg your pardon. So let's call it the better part of 29,000 on these futures. And you can see there's some gaps down here at 26 and change. So the right now, I'd say there's about a $3,000 trading range that the market is basically trapped in. Um, with that backdrop, um, crypto names, uh, there was quite a bit of red there the other day. But I don't think that they actually broke. I remember we were kind of interested in things like this uh, link and some of the Oracle names trying to turn. Uh, is this guy ready to turn and uh, really punch through these weekly highs? I think we're probably a bit early, as you can sort of see from my uh, prognostication. I kind of like the idea of a bit of a pullback, a consolidation. And then, you know, this might actually set up a bullish bot setup kind of idea. So we'd ideally like to see at least uh, 33. Of course, this is always backwards. But it's something like uh, there. So at least 33, but no more than 66 to set up the trend continuation trade. So what I want to see if this is indeed the level is I'd like to see kind of like what I've shown uh, Drew here uh, prior is I wanna see some nice market structure come in here and just give us three higher lows, one, two, three. And then we can start thinking bullish A, B equals C, D is taking us a lot higher. And of course you wanna go long through that. So that's kind of, and I think that's actually a pretty good image of, of what I'm thinking here with regard to uh, crypto and altcoins and stuff. Nice rally off the lows. You know, the whole breadth of the uh, crypto market moved up smartly there. Uh, algos, you know, spit out some pretty good signals. We had bullish AB equals CDs on crypto, uh, things like Bitcoin and stuff. So if this is going to continue, I don't actually think it would be a good idea for this to go straight up like that, because then that'll probably set up things like bearish momentum divergences. It would be better to have a nice solid sideways consolidation you know, just everything calm down a little bit, clean things up. You know, it'd be interesting even to see where the uh, bot trade is. Oh, and interesting. So there's 25 there. So you can actually even move that Oops, uh, up a little bit. But just as, a, as an example of sort of altcoins and what I'd like to see to set up the next leg higher, can I please get a nice consolidation over the next week or so? Uh, and then break out. And then I think actually we probably have uh, some serious uh, some serious upside potential. Um, maybe this initial pullback was all about sort of SBF and his trial getting going and stuff. 
I didn't really see a lot of real like over the top negative reaction by the market. You know, when it initially started, yeah, there was a, a knee jerk sort of buy the rumor, sell the news. Everything was red. Uh, and now it's sort of like, OK, well, his trial's underway now. So, you know, it's just going to do its thing. So now the question is, is this technology actually legit? Is this stuff, is the industry really growing? Uh, is there value in these names, you know, like these oracles? Uh, is this actually the next generation in the uh, future of crypto? And my hunch is we should probably just listen to the market. And like I said, if kind of bullish structure does come in here, then I have no problem looking for the market to press higher. I did notice uh, some of Seward's names have just been really rocking it of late. Um, sort of that kind of thing that, hey, if you build a better mousetrap and this technology is legit, you might see prices really take off here. Uh, so things like uh, Rend, or excuse me, RNDR, um, the Ws are coming in. Higher highs and higher lows defines a bull. You know, uh, so you're super uber bullish about hello. Higher highs and higher lows defines a bull. So, you know, names that are actually have good fundamentals, it doesn't surprise me to see that they're still moving higher. Uh, and they don't really give a crap about things like SBF and stuff. So anyway, there's your backdrop. Okay, um, went a little bit longer than I would have, but what the hell, I love the sound of my own voice. Hope you guys enjoyed all that. Um, I guess we'll leave the video at that. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't take no uh, wooden nickels, as they say. Remember what your number one job is. Uh, and, um, you know, well, I guess we'll go and do like an after party here today. Talk a little bit about, uh, what the boys, uh, saw and girls and house plants saw in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the SOF club meeting tomorrow night. And, um, and, uh, we'll leave the free video at that. All right. Have yourselves a great day. PMA for the win. Slow and steady wins the race. All the best. And bye for now.